We're joined by Will Duff Gordon, Research Director at Data Explorers. Will, thank you so much for coming in. In terms of what we're seeing on Chinese stocks listed in North America, sign of force is something that you picked out. Yeah, exactly. We, we saw it reaching a new 52-week high in terms of short selling all the way through the end of April and May, and we couldn't quite understand why, but it's kind of been the kind of canary in the coal mine here where short sellers have kind of figured this one out. And now, if you look at a lot of these Chinese firms listed in America as a whole basket, the, the average short interest is 6% versus mm -hmm. about 2% for the whole sector. So it's kind of like in aggregate, it's not just Sino Forest, but that was kind of like the big one. Short selling reached over sort of over 30 percent of its issued shares. And, and will there are a couple of other companies that you're actually looking at to power energy generation? What has this been doing? Yeah, so that's kind of up there with about 20 percent of its shares short. Term. You've also got um, Harbin Electric. You've also got Zongpin. Um, and these are there's, so there's at least a dozen companies who've you know fired their auditors or restating their accounts. The SEC has suspended several. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot. So in aggregate, it's a it's, it's an issue, and one wonders what the next one might be. Now there. Could be, there could be uh, nothing going on with these ones, and Sino Forest could be just uh, one rotten apple. But investors it. are taking no chances. But investors are pretty, pretty, you know, pretty, pretty cautious, cautious, and they're increasing yeah. their short bets on a lot of these shares. And it's just short sellers doing what they're kind of, I suppose, paid by their investors to do, which is to not believe what they're being told by yeah. the mainstream research, yeah. doing their own digging, going yeah. to China, looking at these yeah. factories. There was China Media Express people actually yeah. went there and could not see the activity that they were reading about in the research reports, yeah. and were like, "Hang yeah. on a second, this What's doesn't add up." Yeah. So, um, and, and they've been, they've been proved been right, but it's kind of got quite controversial, but we'll, we'll see. And, and this is for all the sectors, actually, also technology companies. Yeah, some technology companies, um, but it's not, yeah, it's not so much a particular type of company, it's just the way that they're reversing into previously listed uh, vehicles in the mm -hmm. States and a lack of transparency and auditing issues, um, so it's, it's one to watch. Uh, so, well, some shorting on some of the Chinese stocks in North America, but also on Italy. Yeah, well, we looked at Italy because um, there's a big research report out there at the moment, um, and I know there's a lot of focus on Greece and, and Spain, Portugal. But uh, meanwhile, in Italy, if you look at the shares in a lot of their financial companies, a lot of their sort of smaller or mid-sized banks, a lot of them have fallen 50 percent mm -hmm. over the last six months. It's very high short interest in Italy. In aggregate, there's more short selling in Italy than there is in Hong Kong uh, or, or so Japan. So can you link it to actually Berlusconi's trials as well and that referendum that we saw last week? Uh, well, not, not, not exactly <laughs> since then. It's just a sort of long-term view. If you look at UBI, right. Bank of Monte Pasquet di Siena, uh -huh. uh, Bank of Popolare di Milano, some big short selling in Italy. Will, thank you so much for coming on.